Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Bob Edmondson. It's my wife, Dana Edmondson, and we have the great privilege and even honor, along with our partner, Jerry Lupo, to own and operate really a little piece of Georgia history. Ziegler Honey Company is, in fact, the oldest honey company in Georgia. The Ziegler's have been packing honey in South Georgia since the early 1800s, registered with the Secretary of State of Georgia in 1935. And since that time, we've been packing pure, raw, unfiltered honey and we're happy to continue that tradition today. We're delighted to present to you this afternoon Georgia Wildflower Honeycomb. As the name implies, it's honeycomb that the bees produce from Georgia wildflower. Now more specifically, our honey is produced in and around the Okefenokee Swamp in what I call the Honey Belt. And if you take State Highway 84 from Brunswick and trace it across the state, that's about where 85% of the honey of this state comes from. It's not an accident. It's because of the flora and fauna that exist in the largest swamp in the United States, the Okefenokee. And then in addition to that, we have a tremendous, literally millions and millions of managed timber forests, which are a desert for many things except for a little gallberry bush that makes it a garden of Eden for honeybees. Those two combine allow us to produce honeycomb. Now, Bees make honeycomb in the same way that they make honey, but producing the wax and drawing it out, and more specifically as you look at the comb as it goes around, and honey, you're welcome to show it to them, you'll notice that it's drawn full and then it's capped white on each side. That's what makes it unusual. In fact, 85% of the honeycomb in the United States every year comes from South Georgia. It's because you can't produce it other place. Now, it's not that honeybees aren't producing comb, but they aren't able to produce it with those white caps. In order to do that, you have to have a tremendously strong bloom for a tremendously long time. So Georgia is uniquely gifted, again, because of the Okefenokee Swamp and because of the timber forest to be able to produce this crop. It's truly an ambassador for Georgia being exported to China, being exported to South Korea, being exported to Europe and around the Middle East. In fact, this December, we were contacted. China's really kind of turned on to this thing in the last couple of years. They bought every last bit of honeycomb that there existed in South Georgia, getting ready for Chinese New Year. The exporter who I talked to, who's out of Los Angeles and, and came to this country from China looking for this, they just learned of this crop. Now, what you may or may not know is that China is the largest producer of honey in the world, but they can't make honeycomb. Georgia makes honeycomb. So, honey, would you take them around and look at the product there? Um, it is unique. It's not unique in the sense that bees make it, but to be able to make it in that thickness, in that quality, that's what it is. You'll notice that in the packaging, we chose to go very simple. Uh, what we're trying to do is allow people to have plenty of visibility to see the product itself. Obviously, identify that to them, but uh, this is all about the product. People who appreciate what it is will certainly uh, want to grab it off the shelves. One of the things we're hoping to highlight as a result of this is beekeepers are walking away from this crop because it is very labor intensive and it's very high risk. You can make three strained honey crops in the period of time that you can make one crop of comb honey. Very high risk. If you have rain at the wrong time, the bees are eating your crop versus making more of it. So um, we hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those at this time.